thanks for having me here and I find it uh, you know honor to be part of such inspirational singer, uh, speakers here at uh, TED uh, at Lay. Akash tablet which most of you might have known as the cheapest tablet which was launched by the government of India at $35. So I'm not going to talk about uh, the tablet, uh, the cheapest tablet here. But here I'm here talking about this, the, the influence that the tablet can have on the education front. So it's more about creating uh, you know, uh, internet availability for the next 3 billion. So 3 billion people across the whole world are some, someone who are deprived of internet availability right now. So here I'm talking about the frugal innovation which is not about creating a technology which would say you know I'm an iPad killer. It's something about you know creating an iPad for a person like this guy who are actually the bottom of the pyramid of this whole world. I'll talk specifically about the Indian uh, economy. So this is a rickshawala. So he also has a good motivation in his life that you know how would I change the way I'm living right now. So the make big motivation for this person would be the education. How am I mean to say education is he has his kids and he wants to provide him good better education so that they can change the way their current living standards are. But there are certain problems which he thinks are there such as the electricity and network problems. But you, if you see closely into this picture this person has a mobile phone and if you could see in India right now in let's say in 2006 everybody said who requires a uh, you know mobile phone but now everybody in this country irrespective of your you know a maid coming to your home or any person uh, such as this uh, rickshawala they all possess a mobile phone i would like to talk about the education uh, problem which exists in this country uh, as you keep uh, moving away from the urban part of the country the, the the kind of education which exists in the you know rural areas keeps declining there is a graph which we i've created uh, based on the uh, based on the city delhi if you see if you keep uh, going away from the city there is a big problem of uh, you know students uh, dropping out of their classrooms and the pass rate also decre decreases and that is majorly because of the lack of infrastructure that exists in those places as well as the good teachers any place you find a good teacher, they would definitely move to the urban part of the country. There's a scale of big scale of challenge uh, that exists in India. There should be around 360 million pe uh, students in schools right now, out of which just there are 219 million. There are 100 million students in this kids in this whole country which are deprived of education right now. There's no schools around their place so that they can go and study there. I don't have internet access uh, availability here, but if you could uh, you go to Google. Uh, YouTube and type Indian funny teacher you would be surprised to see the kind of uh, you know teachers that are there in the rural part of the country and the education that they are providing there so 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 many of you would uh, I'm, I could see someone laughing here but it's not funny it's it's sad it's sad because you know the new generation who are learning from there are not getting the proper education but there's also a good point you find this, this video was taken in Patna, uh, some, somewhere around Patna, 50 kilometers in Bihar. The good point was the teacher was available in the school. There are many places in rural India where there are no teachers with schools there, students coming in and teacher would come in just once a day. So there's a big uh, challenge like uh, in the previous uh, speakers also said, the teachers are very scarce in this country or in this whole world. So we need to, you know, support these teachers by bringing technology into it. So I would talk, talk about the kind of teaching that exists in this country. A bit of that has changed from my own personal experience. I would say when I was a student, when I was getting uh, taught, it was like teacher coming to the class like an orator. It would explain me, let's say, uh, any science topic. Let's talk about nervous system. The teacher would come to the class, explain you how the nervous system is and go and read your books and that's it. But now, uh, in current uh, generation, there are smart classes as a come up. There are proper videos that are shown along with the teacher. So they equip the teacher to help them impart education in a better way. And that helps in a better way of understanding in the t uh, students as well. But here I'm talking about a flip kind of classroom. That would, that would be something which we are working on and we want that to be you know, transformed into the most of the schools right now. And that would mean provide every single student with a technology so that they can do any kind of research, any kind of study on their own. It's like every student has their own capability of understanding. You know, one can understand a, a topic in a day, other can ha you know take five days. And so every person has their own capability. So 
a single teacher cannot understand how the, uh, the classroom of 30 students you know, uh, grasp that knowledge from him in the same lecture. So there's, this has to be a flip kind of classroom in which the two teacher provides every student with enough resources like a technology into the palm of hand so that they can uh, you know, tell him that tomorrow we're going, we are going to be discussing about nervous system. All right. Why don't you all go back home and search about what nervous system is? Being these gadgets in the arm, uh, you know, in the hands of these kids, it it becomes a four-way kind of learning. They read, they listen, they see, they have an interaction. So this four-way of learning has a better impact in the student. Has it creates more uh, excitement in the students to you know study there, study the, those topics instead of reading from a book. So here, when the student go back home, they they watch videos, they research on their own on a topic, they get immense knowledge. Internet is something which, which is something uh, which can provide you everything in, in your palm of hands. So when, when the student understands that this is nervous system, this is how it works, the next day when he comes to the class and the teacher is there and they discuss, he's teaching that topic to the students, the students, the interaction between the teacher and the student becomes very uh, interactive. And here, the teacher from an orator becomes uh, uh, your uh, your coach. It's not an orator; it's a coach. A very good example. How do you ride? Uh, you know, teach a, a kid to ride a bicycle. You don't tell him that this is a paddle, this is a handle. You sit on this, and then you ride the bike. You actually, you know, support him from the back, hold the seat, and practice along with him until he learns how to balance. One would take a day. One would take two days. So this is something, uh, you know, a, like a coach, the teacher has to, you know, interact with the classroom and ensure everybody understands that topic. And with the, with the technology and the e-books and the videos, everything available in the palm of the hands, they can go back and, you know, rework on the topics that were discussed in the classroom. So flipped classroom is something that we think uh, should be transformed into most of the schools. And the technology will have to play a very vital role in providing such uh, solutions to these schools. So why is this not taking place right now? When I talk about some, you know, providing technology, there are many big barriers. The major one would be the affordability. The gadgets which you want to use to access internet, they cost uh, 10, 12, 12,000 rupees. So something which should be affordable that can be given to students so that even if they break, there's not a big financial loss that happens. So we have to work on the affordability thing. And the other problem is, okay, how do we provide internet in the rural areas? We don't have Wi-Fi, WiMAX, or 3G network availability here. But these things can be worked upon. There is a big penetration, uh, you know, left in this country. The people who are using, there are 900 million people who are using mobile phone in this country as compared to just 300, 300 million using internet. So there's a 600 million people who are actually using mobile phone, has actually uh, access to internet on the uh, you know uh, cellular network, but are not accessing the internet. So this three mil uh, million, uh, three billion people are in the world, but there are 600 million in this country which are still deprived of t uh, internet. So when we talk about affordability, we have to come up to a price point which we think should be uh, you know something that would encourage people to go and get that ga gadget into their homes. So when we talk about uh, the price uh, target price point we conclude that if the salary of uh, if the price of the product becomes uh, you know one fourth of the an, uh, monthly salary of the person we think that person can easily afford that and depending upon the Indian conditions we think it's around two triple nine or three thousand price range we thought that would be something which would encourage people to go ahead and get that uh, product for so this is something which I talked earlier that you know uh, why would a, a person need a mobile phone? In 2003, these were what people were asking. But now there's even your maiden at home, uh, you know, puts a Facebook update that I'm not coming tomorrow to your home. And, uh, and the you know, owner is really pissed off. Why didn't you inform me? She said, I have updated my Facebook status. You should have checked it from there. So, 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 so all people are getting tech savvy. And you know, uh, this, these things are something which we will be seeing more often uh, in coming uh, months or years. So this is something I talk about the internet penetration on uh, in India as compared to China, where we have cashed up in our cellular penetration, which has gone up from 100 uh, million to around 900 million from 2006 to 2012. And we think, and the major thing which uh, you know resulted in this kind of penetration was the cost. 
the cost of mobile phones dropped significantly, and that helped this penetration. And similar thing, we think of you know bringing an internet revolution would be only possible if we bring the you know break the affordability barrier. So what do we work for this frugal innovation? What are the challenges, and what do we require, and how do we go about it? As a as as a, te a, techno a technological partner like DataWin, we are working on certain things like you know having an innovative design and unique business model and technological breakthrough with disruptive distribution model. This is what we are working on to you know make sure that we get to that price of three thousand that we are aiming for. So if I talk about these uh, one by one, if it any person who if uh, have used a, a, a tablet knows what all specification it has. But a person who is using a 3,000 rupee tablet would never want an HDMI port in it. Do you agree with me? Why would he need an HDMI port? He doesn't have a you know, LCD or plasma TV at home to connect it to. So why do we put those additional features into those uh, you know, uh, uh, products? So let's go to the market, ask what they want exactly. And when we talk to the students, it's exactly what we want. It's just the basic internet browsing that requires. And it's not something multitasking that they require with good screen resolution so that we put in all these and try to save the cost on additional specifications. So if you talk about uh, the specifications which we gave to the government were similar to the iPad and cost 10 times cheaper than the iPad. So the another barrier was the connectivity. Even here when uh, we came to Ladakh, there is a big problem of uh, Wi-Fi and 3G and many of the uh, restaurants, you know, uh, flash wi with Wi-Fi so that people can come in and have in their uh, restaurant. So, uh, but the, another thing which I found uh, which was available was the 2G connectivity. So the 2G is readily available throughout this country in rural areas, but the problem is speed. You cannot have a proper internet browsing on a 2G network. So what we have done here is, we have done here is, we, we compress and accelerate the data. So when you use a, a gadgets like uh, a tablets in your palm, we want to you know, make sure that it's a server client kind of business. It's a technological term where we think that you know, a person who is using those uh, gadgets is actually having the processing speed of the same gadget in their home. But not, it's not like that. It's a server client based model where the processing speed is actually of the server and whatever the view on the, on the tablet is actually happening in the server. So here we are trying to use the speed of the server and with the technology of data compression ac acceleration, we try to provide you a speed of, uh, you know, in a 2G network, which is 10 times faster than with what you can get on any other device. And the other thing is, uh, you know, shift the burden. Don't put every, uh, you know, uh, price on the hardware. You have multiple revenues of generation of uh, income out of that. There are contents, there are advertisements. So when I talk about content, uh, providing a tablet to a student would not help me impart education there straight away. I need to put in, you know, content into that. Put in e-books, put in video lectures. So here we we try to we try to conduct a couple of uh, couple of uh, hackathons with uh, these universities where we you know invite uh, IT professionals who are creating apps and all that, so that they can give their uh, their, their applications to us, which can help us provide solutions to the masses. We also conduct some app to empower uh, uh, programs in which we call all the uh, app, uh, con app providers to come up with a solution on something which is related to a social cause. Uh, like uh, there was, a, there was a, a problem with the ladies in Afghanistan who actually were illiterate and they wanted something in their hands so that they can teach their kids on how to uh, how to use uh, how to how to get literate how to uh, get education which doesn't mean that the mother needs to be educated enough it means it could be an app which could you know define a <coughs> discipline that from this time to this time he needs to study on this topic which is there on my which is there with uh, on my tablet so it's something <coughs> which is a timeline defined it could be something related to farmers, you know, with the farmers' uh, suicide rate increasing, they don't get proper market pl prices uh, in the market, and there's a, uh, there are uh, uh, distribution uh, uh, mafias uh, uh, playing role of uh, fluctuating the pricings. So we can have an app uh, developed for the farmers, which can actually provide them with proper prices, weather forecast, and even uh, you know uh, information on what incentives the governments are providing them. So it's a call, it's a collective effort which we think, uh, you know, these technology can help 
and uh, we can in part uh, uh, take it forward with all the groups <coughs> and provide a better solution. So for now, we are working with a couple of uh, NGOs. Uh, we've been working in uh, Mahabodhi also. I just happened to visit the school here, and it was really good experience understanding, uh, seeing the kids uh, using these tablets. And uh, the important thing was, I gave a tablet to a student who had never actually used a tablet, and he, in 10 minutes, he came up with me and, and, and opened an encyclopedia on the tablet, showing uh, one of the scientists, uh, uh, you know, showing me solar system. Yeah, these are the planets which I recently learned from my, uh, from my test book, and here it is. And I, she also found a quiz related to that. So it's become more interactive, and you need not uh, you know, worry on how to you know, teach a kid on how to use these gadgets. This, the, student, the kids at our home are smarter than us on using these smartphones and gadgets. And you just have to provide them this technology and these solutions, and you see how they transform and how they get uh, you know, uh, information out of these gadgets. And I'm sure then they would become your teachers. Thank you so much.